Good morning Mars and welcome to the video. This week we will be trying something a little bit different. As you can see I've got some old metal orcs lined up to paint. Now if you're usually here for the Gasland stuff, don't you worry, I will still be doing that. I just need a creative palette cleanser after 3 straight months of working on diecast cars. If you are new to the channel, welcome, I usually do Gasland stuff. But I do play a lot of systems and I am an avid orc clicker. So fully expect that to reflect in my videos. Now, these boys on screen at the moment may seem a bit scrawnier than usual for orcs, and that is because they were from the before times. The Gorka Morka period to be exact because these are very much Gorka Morka orcs. I will be painting them today and showing you my progress step by step. On the screen right now are all the paints I use just in case you want to crib any of my colors. And on the screen later you will see the orcs, or the orc singular, as it progresses through the process. First off, it's important to note that I do things a bit differently on this channel. I do not take footage of me actually painting the miniatures, because A, I do not have the studio set up for it, I paint in the sun in my garage, and B, I paint real close to my face so getting the footage can prove really uncomfortable. So what I try to do instead is to get some nice exposed snapshots of each step. For these orcs, the first thing I have done after priming them black has been to give them a zenithal highlight with my ink of choice, which is Liquitex Titanium White. One more further thing I do at this step is to do some preliminary edge highlighting, just using some cheap craft store acrylics thinned down to help further define the highlights and make my later edge highlighting much easier. The orc with a club that I'm currently spinning around has already been edge highlighted in this manner. Once all of that highlighting is done, I spray everything in a gloss varnish. This will help with the next step as I use a lot of washes and it also helps protect the relatively fragile ink. And yes, I do use the airbrush a lot. If you are looking to get this effect with a rattle can, it is absolutely achievable. It will just be a bit more abrupt, but it's still absolutely workable. Especially so if you go in with the monochrome stage edge highlights. Once the gloss dries, we will start going in with our base coats. Now, I personally paint mostly in washes when I'm painting things in this style. It's kind of like the quote-unquote contrast method GW uses with their contrast paints, except I've been doing it since like 2013. It's not quite glazing, it's closer to washing still with the properties of glazing being utilized. As we establish a nice yellow foundation for the green and the leather to come. Once the yellow has dried, we just go straight onto it with BL Ton Green to get our primary skin tone. This gets you a nice bright green which you can absolutely use as is. At this stage, I call it two-step orc skin. If you are going for a speed painting recipe for orc skin, you could absolutely stop right here. You see the bright yellow peaks making some natural blends as it interacts with the nice translucent green, which forms a great foundation for the layers to come. Most of the colors in this paint job will be 2-3 to three steps, but I like to go the extra mile when I paint orc skin. Now as we go into the fiddlier steps, we will be focusing down on just the one orc and we will pick Smiley for this purpose. Carrying on with the base coat, we now paint in the leather using Scale 75 Ink Density Chestnut Ink. If this isn't available, GW Contrast Snakebite Leather also works. Then we paint in the poncho area with GW Seraphim Sepia, one of the most useful GW wash paints. This gives us a nice muted tan, which we will later blend in further to the already established edge highlights. After that, Smiley's trousers get a dousing with Nuln Oil, just the one layer, and then we'll also hit up his mouth with a dousing of Rakeland Flesh Shade, which is a good way to establish a flesh shade, go figure. Next up we will seize the washing for a moment to paint in the metallics. For this paint scheme I like to keep the metallics nice and simple, in this case we're just gonna go with a gunmetal, scale 75 thrash metal onto all the metallic parts, just straight onto it. And after that we go in with some black to pick out all the rivets to help define them later when we highlight them. And now for what I think is the most important step in this color scheme is the Agrax Earthshade Wash. Just a good old wash of Agrax Earthshade onto everything, even remotely brown. Mind that I avoid the skin completely with this, but I also go onto the metallics. This is important not just for definition, but because it also further desaturates my limited color palette and emphasizes the orc skin. 
Speaking of, we now go back to the skin and build it up a little with scale 75 golden flesh. When highlighting orc skin, I personally prefer to go into pinks instead of greens. And this paint in particular blends in really good with the previous layer. If you're after the GW equivalent, I believe Kislev Flesh will do the trick. After that highlight, I bring it back down with a wash of Druchi Violet and Lamian Medium Mix. I use this stuff so much that I have it pre-mixed. It will dull down the vibrancy of the green a little bit, but that is not necessarily a bad thing if you're going for something a bit more skin-like. I use this shade in a lot of my wash base skin tones, not just the green ones, to help things feel a bit more fleshy. We are almost done with the skin, so before we start getting into the lightest skin tones, we're gonna put down the eye color, which in this case will just be a basic red. We will also put down a base coat for the base, no washes here, just some straight up paint, GW Mournfang Brown and Scale 75, Graphite. That is all the base colors down, so now we can focus on definition. Like the base coats, we will be doing most of the edge highlights in two color steps. With the leather, we start with Averland Sunset, which helps it come off as a bit more yellow and separates it from the predominantly brown base. Then we go back to the skin and keeping within the previous highlight layer, we put down some Scale 75 light skin. This blends the yellow leaning skin up to a pink leaning skin giving me the color I am happy with for this particular shade of Orc Blush. And then we go on to Scale 75 Birch, which highlights the leather, it highlights the tan, and it highlights the gray. This unifies the base colors in their extreme highlights, and it also goes onto the Orc's tooth and nails as I shade those up into a bone color. I have also gone in with a pure white onto the eyes to make them pop, and once again onto the extreme points of the teeth and the nails as soon as the birch on that dries. That is the non-metallics done for the scheme, so I go in with an airbrush and spray on some matte coat. This will even out the finish, especially in my case, because the scale 75 ink is glossy. It will also help protect the model to an extent, but this is a metal model, so if I drop it, it's probably gonna chip. The matte coat will hit the metal, but I'm not too worried about that because we're gonna come in with some scale 75 heavy metal and just do some highlighting on that gunmetal. This will bring the definition and the shine back up, and the rivets we painted black earlier help it so those metallics show up a little bit more prominently. For this paint scheme, I will do all the weapons in this simple metallic color as to not distract from the green skin. As we near the end of the scheme, I start on the base, which I also keep pretty basic. Just a single dry brush of Terminata Stone over the brown and the gray. With this dry brush, I will also hit up the fur parts of the orcs, which are the same tan as the shirt. This kind of basing is a good candidate for tufts, which I might put on in the future. But for now, we just close up the scheme by painting the rim with my roughly 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Atelier Painting Medium. This is a black I use almost exclusively for base rims, and I have a batch of it pre-mixed. But honestly, any old black paint will do just fine. And there we have our Gorka Morka Orc. Personally, I very rarely paint things just for the sake of it. Everything I paint has to have a purpose in a game. And in the case of this boy and his friends, they are of course meant for playing Gorka Morka with. Now I have kept them on the 25 mil round basis just so I can play 3rd edition with them. However, expectedly that has had a side effect. Let me just grab their truck here for one moment. For the people familiar with it, it should be obvious what the problem is. In Korkamorka you have to actually fit your models onto the vehicle, as in you have to place them onto the vehicle as if they were riding it. It's why these old trucks are so flat and wide. The new bases make it so not a lot of orcs can fit onto one of these old trucks. And as much as I would like to stick to the old models for this particular crew, I think I'm going to have to upgrade. Cross compatibility with other additions is more important to me than fidelity to the old system. Also, I was just not a big fan of the old bases, they would keep falling over. Also, I do have this one more boy here, he is the prototype for this paint scheme. He is slightly different from the final batch, but I am fine with that. The issue is, well, he can no longer fit on the truck, and I would personally like to use most of these models for this warband, so we're gonna have to upgrade for sure. That said, I do own an FDM printer, and I have found that it can be a pretty big help when dealing with these orky problems. Mostly by giving you the ability to straight up print out your solutions. 
But that will be all for now, and we will save this nice neon truck for the next video. If you are a fan of Gorka Morka or a fellow orc liker, you might be interested in my other videos. Currently, they make up the bulk of the channel, and they cover the game Gaslands, which is philosophically speaking one of the orkiest games you can play. I highly recommend it. I do hobby and build videos like this one, and I also do giveaways, but my main project is telling the story of Seaman City through my monthly narrative battle reports. If that sounds like something you are interested in, by all means give us a subscribe, it is particularly helping to me as a growing channel. And with that I am going to wrap up. I do hope you have enjoyed my first Orky video, there will be more to come, until next time.